Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that was published back in 1995 by folks at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. And this paper caught my interest because it looks at a data structure that we all thought we knew, strings, and takes a fresh look at it. Strings have been a fundamental data type in most programming languages for a while now. Every programmer is familiar with it. But in this paper, the authors are making the argument that we could use a more efficient representation of strings than the character array representation we are all familiar with. The very first question the authors have to address is one of motivation. What is the problem with the existing data structure for strings and why would we want a new one? And they give several reasons. The first one is that in the current representation, it is very inefficient to treat strings as immutable. If you pass a string into a function, you want to change it in some way, that usually modifies your source string. And more and more, we now know that immutability really helps avoid bugs in programs. So we want a string representation that makes it easy to construct immutable strings. The second big reason is that the most common string operations, things like concatenating or looking for substrings, are not very efficient in the character array representation. If you concatenate two strings, often you have to copy both of them. And so you're using a lot of both time and space. And the third big reason is that a lot of these operations become painfully slow when scaled up to very, very long strings. The existence proof of this is that if you look at most common editors, they don't use the string representation. They'll usually use some sort of other specialized data structure because the array representation just doesn't scale gracefully with respect to performance. The authors are proposing a new data structure called a rope, and it's actually very simple and elegant and pretty easy to understand. They're basically representing a string as a search tree where the actual string contents are stored at the leaves. And each vertex contains the size of the strings under it. And when you set up your data structure that way, you can view the entire tree as essentially a binary search tree or a search tree in general. And then you can use all the same operations that we're familiar with for search trees to look up and modify this data structure. If you wanted to simply emit the entire string, you would do a left to right traversal of this tree. If you wanted to fetch a given character, say fetch the ith character, again, it would be a search tree lookup. You would traverse the tree and you would know what position you were at because each vertex contains the length of the string under it and you would be able to find the ith character by going down to the correct leaf. Now, assuming that this tree is well balanced, and we'll look at that in a minute, this operation would be order of log n, where n is the length of the string. Now, let's look at how we would concatenate. Conceptually, it's pretty simple. If you have two ropes or two trees representing two separate strings, to concatenate them, you could simply create a new root and have these two ropes as new children of this new root. On top of that simple conceptual framework, you can layer on several performance optimizations. For example, if both the strings that you're concatenating are very short, you could just create a simple flat rope or a simple flat string. You can also do some optimizations to ensure that if you're doing the pretty common operation of constructing a string by individually concatenating characters to its end, you end up with a tree that's not lopsided. So while you're appending, you can concatenate the leaves in a way that doesn't give you a lopsided tree. And then just like red-black trees or AVL trees, there's also the concept of rebalancing the tree so that the final depth of the tree is still order log n. You want to rebalance only for very long ropes and rarely. I'd encourage you to read the paper for a full treatment of the rebalancing algorithm. But the basic idea is to look at a rope and then 
go from the shortest strings in it up to the longest ones and keep concatenating them. So if you look at this example where the string A, B, C, D, E, F is represented in this kind of a lopsided rope, you can start with the shortest strings and then the next shortest one and so on and end up with this tree on the bottom right which is much more balanced. The authors have used this representation in the CDAR language. CDAR was a programming language built at PARC in the late 80s, early 90s, and this is what they used for the built-in string type. And they got some interesting performance numbers out of this. Let's look at this graph for concatenation time where along the x-axis, on a log scale, you have the lengths of the strings, and on the y-axis, also on a log scale, you have the CPU time taken for concatenation. These lines going up and to the right are for the traditional array representation. As expected, it's order n. So as the strings grow, the concatenation time grows linearly along with it. But when you move to a tree-based representation, as you can see in these highlighted lines over here, the rope representation does much, much better. As you can see, it is not growing linearly with the size of the string. Traversal time is still linear as expected, though their implementation seems to be optimized enough that it still performs relatively better than the array representation. So that was a quick idea at the concept of ropes, which is a new data structure for representing strings that makes it much easier to represent immutable strings to have cheap concatenation and it scales well to long strings. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.